I bring this meeting to order of the Massachusetts Gaming Commission. It is public meeting number 293 on Monday, March 16th, 2020 at 10 a.m. With respect to further housekeeping matters, <clears throat> again, uh, given the complexity of our technology, if you could remember to mute your phone or, or device after your pre presentation, this would be recommended for all participants. Otherwise, I do um, appreciate everyone keeping their phones mute. And of course, when you do commence a presentation or speak, if you could just identify yourself for all of our participants. <clears throat> Again, um, as I said, I uh, do appreciate everyone's patience as we navigate this uncharted territory holding remote uh, meetings at the same time we are dealing with unprecedented outside uh, uh, <clears throat> stressors. And as to future commission meetings, we had anticipated an agenda setting meeting on uh, this coming Wednesday. We have, uh, <clears throat> we have decided to cancel it for Wednesday and the executive staff will work on uh, reviewing the calendar over the next day and we will be uh, coordinating that with all of my fellow commissioners to see if the uh, proposed calendar works for you and that it reflects our priorities at this time to assure continued operations. So please stay tuned. As I stated on Saturday morning, the authority and responsibilities of this commission are broad and we do maintain that the safety and well-being of our employees and the employees and patrons of our licensees is of paramount importance. I want to say I continue to be so proud of the work of the commission, and I thank each employee of the MGC for their tremendous work as we assess a moment in history that's changing so rapidly. We recognize this moment's enormity and its reach. Last night, Governor Baker took unparalleled action and issued several orders, including, as you know, the closing of all private and public schools for the next three weeks, I believe it's effective Tuesday, and limiting all public gatherings to 25. With that backdrop, I do determine that we have an, a need for this emergency commission meeting and so at this time, I would like to proceed with our item 2A on our agenda, an update on the temporary suspension of operations of the gaming licensees in light of the coronavirus that uh, took place over the last 48 hours. Interim Executive Director Wells, if you could begin that update, please. Good morning, Madam Chair. <laughs> Uh, first, I'd like to uh, reiterate what the chair had indicated, that uh, the safety and well-being of our employees, of the casino employees, the public at large is of paramount concern. Um, so I would like to thank the licensees for working so expediently and so quickly and with our community uh, regarding the buildings and their operations. I would also like to truly compliment both the gaming aid staff as well as the police staff that effectuated these closings in such an efficient and effective manner. So uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, have our gaming agents chief, our assistant director, Bruce Van, address the commission on just an update on the operation. Thank you. So next, should we hear from Bruce yeah. first? Yeah, I think Bruce is on the call. I saw his name. Are you there, Bruce? Is Brian on the call? Actually, maybe, Bruce, you don't know how to um, unmute. If you could do star six, please. Are you able to hear us now, Bruce? Okay. 
Burke. I, Ms. Burke on the line, are you able to unmute? Chief, Madam uh, Chair, why don't I go ahead and, uh, is Brian Connors on the line? I am. Uh, Thank you. Captain Connors, if you could please just give the uh, commission just an update from the police, state police perspective on the closing, that would be helpful at this time. Sure, good morning. And, and, and just to, to inter, um, interrupt so literally, uh, Captain Connors, for those who need to present, the technology right now allows me to mute everyone. I, I, it is very difficult for me to find everyone's names fluidly. I'm going to try to do that as we speak to see if I can find um, Bruce, but that is what the challenge is. So you could attempt to unmute yourselves. Otherwise, I'll try to do that in, in real time as well. We just have a lot of people on the phone, so thank you. Captain Connors. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, just in a general sense, uh, things went very smoothly from our perspective uh, starting Saturday uh, through Saturday evening and into Sunday morning. Uh, I think the licensees did a great job preparing for this, um, planning and implementing their closure procedures. Uh, you know, they should be commended for that. It, it did go very smoothly. They did take uh, precautions and necessary steps beginning Saturday uh, to make it a, a pretty seamless uh, closure across all three properties. We did see significantly less crowds. Uh, we, we somewhat anticipated, but obviously uh, did not know going into Saturday evening uh, how, what those crowds would look like. Um, again, everything from the staff, uh, the licensee staff, security departments, uh, and their managers and executives uh, did a very good job. So from this end, it went very smoothly, um, as smoothly as could have been expected. Thank you, Captain. Uh, uh, Director Wells, were we able to... Uh, to uh, I'm, I'm trying to reach Bruce now independently, and Burke, uh, what I'd suggest, you know, if uh, any of the licensees uh, just want to confirm the uh, the effectuation of the closing this time, maybe we could go through uh, each of those properties and the comments they need to make to the commission, and while I try to contact Mr. Bant. Yeah, I, I can see that he doesn't seem to have the same uh, established tie here that others have, so he might be having some technical problems joining the call. All right, perhaps we could first hear from uh, Encore Boston Harbor, if you would like to give your update. And again, uh, forgive me, I, I had intended to thank all the, the uh, three licensees for their you know, transparent and, and cooperative um, work with us over the last 48 hours and before. So again, I think that we all recognize every entity here and along with our commission and all of our employees are working so hard to achieve a, such a major uh, responsibility that you know reaches well beyond our own entities. So thank you. So Encore Boston Harbor. Yes, good morning. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, Chair and Commissioners. Um, this is Brian Gulbrandt. Everything went very smoothly. We want to thank the GEU for their cooperation. Everything uh, was executed as planned. We are fully closed. There are no guests. There are no occupied rooms. We are in good shape. And uh, we are uh, ready for whatever comes at us. Okay. Thank you very much. MGM Springfield, would you like to give a, an update as well, please? Yes, uh, this is Seth Stroud from MGM Springfield. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you, Seth. Fantastic. Uh, yes, we, we effectively closed on Saturday. Uh, it was a smooth closing. We were able to uh, get all customers in an orderly fashion off the floor uh, prior to midnight. We've also... Um, closed all venues and we're able to get um, all guests out of the hotel um, prior to midnight uh, on Saturday. And so we've been um, fully vacated other than um, our essential employees um, since midnight on Saturday and it, it went very smoothly overall. Well, thank you for that, Seth. So, that, so in fact, even though the timing under 
our uh, vote was for a 5.59 a.m. Uh, suspension of all operations. You're saying it was midnight on Saturday or on Sunday? So, so by 12 a.m. Sunday, so mid midnight Saturday night, we were we were fully we had fully um, wrapped wrapped up gaming operations, and uh, the the other non gaming operations were 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 ceased at the same time. So we beat that by about 24 hours. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I had understood. I just want to make sure it was clear to everyone that you had really um, had uh, surpassed the deadline uh, in, a, in a positive way on the right side. Um, and then, thank you. Uh, thank you. And now, PPC, um, President George, are you on the line? I am. Can you hear me, uh, Madam Chair? I, I can. I can, Lance. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, consistent with what we just heard from, from our fellow licensees, MGM and Encore, no material issues. We closed in a very smooth and orderly fashion thanks to the collaboration with both uh, the IEB and the GEU. Uh, we closed uh, just a little before 5.59, and, uh, and that's where we are currently. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. With respect to the gaming, uh, again, interim... Executive Director Wells, are we able to uh, yes, hear Yeah, Madam Chair, so Bruce Band is having uh, his computers going in and out, so we are going to have Bert Kane give an update for the group. He just got unmute. Yeah, and just so you know, Bruce, if, if, if you were able to get to him, he can dial the phone number from his phone unless he's having trouble accessing his report. So the phone number, that would be at the top of the agenda. I mean, actually, it looks like it's in the middle of the agenda. Do you have that in front of you, Karen? Um, but it's on the notice. If, if you want to to send that to Bruce. Uh, yeah, what I would Yeah, I call can just, Sorry, go ahead. He can call in, but otherwise we will right now proceed with Burke. But I just wanted to offer that to, to Bruce as well. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Burke, good morning. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Commissioners. Can you hear me? We can. Very good. Uh, to uh, echo what the three licensees said, the closing did go very successfully. From a gaming agent standpoint, it was uh, very important that we got all the chips off the floor, all the gaming equipment was secured, all the money from the slot machines and the TRUs was removed and counted, all the money has been certified in the count rooms. The money now is secured in the cage. I believe we're waiting for different schedules to expedite the shipment of the funds off site um, to the banks. The uh, slot machines have been disabled. Um, let's see what else we got here. The, the knock has helped us with that. And security and surveillance are staffed there on site. They're taking care of the requirements that we've uh, set forth in agreement with them. The alcohol outlets and the um, partner uh, commercial properties on site, everything's been secured from their side. And GEU security will be uh, on site 24-7 watching the establishment. And surveillance, of course, will have their staffing available to watch um, the cameras and what's going on 24-7 uh, also. Uh, is there any other questions? I think you've done a good job. Uh, tip of the cap to the licensee, GEU and the gaming agents for getting this done so quickly and uh, well, well done by all. Thank you. Thank you, Burke. And uh, please stay tuned because now I'm going to turn to all the commissioners to see if they have questions for the presentations uh, so far. Again, I'm going to ask in order, but I'll give the opportunity for you to to um, to wait for questions and comments, and then I'll turn back to you as, uh, for a second chance. So starting with Commissioner uh, Zuniga, do you have any questions for the um, presenters, and maybe we should take them one at a time. Commissioner Zuniga, um, if you're talking, you're on mute still. So it's, if you would either like to wait 
um, and hear from the other commissioners, that's fine. But if you do have a question now. Okay, Commissioner Stebbins, we'll turn back to uh, Commissioner Zuniga. Do you have any questions for any of the pre presenters? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first, I also would like to thank uh, our team and our licensees uh, for all of their ongoing efforts to suspend the gaming operations. It's certainly great when we can all work together. Um, just a, a quick question for uh, my friends at MGM. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, non-patron use of your parking garage. Could you update this as to whether the parking garage is available for many of the other downtown employees and, and workers who uh, I know have been using your facility on a day in and day out basis. Sure. Can you hear me, Commissioner Seth? I can, Seth. Good morning. Good morning. Um, yes, the, the garage was close to the public along with the rest of the facility. Uh, we, the remaining employees who are still working here are utilizing it, um, but due to the closure of the facility and security, uh, as well as ADA, uh, issues, uh, surrounding use of the garage, it's been close to the public and we've notified, um, the city abutters, the city and, uh, the courthouse the same. Great. Thank you very much, Seth. I appreciate that. Uh, Madam Chair, those are the only questions I had. Uh, that's the only question I had at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner O'Brien, do you have any questions? Again, if you are um, on mute, if you could press star six, please. Commissioner O'Brien, I'm not able to hear you. Um, and uh, Commissioner Zuniga, I'm not able to hear you. So, oh, I'm here. There, there you are. Who's that? I, uh, this is uh, Zuniga, Enrique Zuniga, uh, Chair. I dropped off for a couple of minutes. Maybe that's when you asked for my questions, but uh, I don't have any at this point. You have none at this point. Great. Thank you. Um, and then I just turned to Commissioner O'Brien. Do you have any questions for the presenters? And if I can't hear her, we'll turn to Commissioner, to Commissioner Cameron. Can you hear me now? We can. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah, my phone for some reason blocked me out. No problem. Um, I, I don't have any questions. I just I want to reiterate the um, the praise for IBGEU and the licensees and executing it um, so quickly and, and smoothly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Commissioner Cameron. Uh, I, uh, I have no questions. And again, uh, very, very well done by all. Thank you. Excellent. So uh, I will turn back to uh, just uh, Commissioner, uh, none of the commissioners, but to Interim Executive Director Karen Wells, do you have any further updates that you would like to give at this time? None at this time, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Then we'll move on to, uh, oh, so before we move from that, again, uh, thank you to the three licensees, to the GEU, to um, um, I, I be, uh, are you being, excuse me, I'm, I'm getting a little bit tired here first thing this morning. Thank you so much uh, for all of those efforts. And you know, we also know that uh, they were working with a team that's broad uh, through the direction of, of you, Karen. So thank you. Um, and now moving on to item number 2B, uh, the report on the operational status of simulcasting and advanced deposit wagering in light of, of the virus again. And, uh, I would turn to uh, uh, Dr. Lightbaum, who I believe is on, our director of racing. Alex, can you can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, I believe that we have representatives from um, Plain Ridge Park, Casino, Evo Tool, Suffolk Downs, Chip Puddle, and uh, Raiden Park, Mr. Carney, um, and his team. Would you like to to uh, start us off? Uh, sure. Um, the um, licensees 
uh, let us know. Obviously, um, Plain Ridge Park um, Racing, they went along with um, the casino as far as um, discontinuing operations. Um, Steve O'Toole can um, speak to that further um, when you get to him. Um, Suffolk also discontinued operations um, on uh, Saturday at 6 p.m., I believe. Um, Raynham uh, continued to operate yesterday, um, and um, obviously with um, the new um, guidelines put out by the um, governor, um, that will probably change that, but I'll let you go from there. Thank you, Dr. Lightbound. Um, so we'll start in order. Um, Steve, are you on successfully? Stephen, uh, Steve O'Toole? Uh, I'm on. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay, first I'd like to thank Alex, uh, Director of, uh, Alex Lightbound, Director of Racing, for being uh, available 24 hours a day for any questions or, or comments that uh, we had with regard to this issue. We uh, closed down with the, uh, actually uh, long before the casino, we, at, at the end of our business night on Saturday, uh, with, the, with the closing of uh, the tracks on Saturday night, uh, we ceased op operations, uh, cleared the floor out, and that was the end of our business. It all went very well. We were on, we were on site on Saturday, uh, myself as well as our managers, to inform the customers that were coming that uh, that we wouldn't be simulcasting for <clears throat> at least um, a few weeks into the future. Thank you. Um, before I move on to our other pres um, um, presenters, I will ask my fellow commissioners if you have a particular question for um, Steve with respect to, with respect to PPC's racing. Commissioner Cameron? Uh, no questions. Thank you for such an orderly closing. Thank you. And Commissioner O'Brien? Uh, no, no questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Zuniga? No questions. No, no, no questions. No, no questions, uh, Chair. I, I, uh, I muted myself, uh, and I intended to unmute me, but uh, no questions here. Sorry. Okay, no, no, no problem. Again, uh, I'll just give you the opportunity to uh, make any comment or question. Commissioner Stebbins? Uh, no questions at this time, Madam Chair. Excellent. Thank you, Steve. Um, and again, thank you for... Um, <laughs> for continued cooperation and of course for Dr. Lightbound's um, leadership here you know we do understand it truly takes the entire team effort so, so we really yeah. appreciate all of the cooperation just one other thing I'd like to uh, uh, add um, I'm not sure if this is the meeting for it or not but I would like to talk about our upcoming uh, live meet at some point in time whether that be uh, with just with Dr. Lightbound and a representative of the commission or just with Dr. Lightbound or uh, at this point, I'm not sure how you want to handle that. So that's really um, very fair. Uh, we did have that on our agenda when we had to suspend our last uh, full commission meeting that was uh, not conducted remotely um, on, I guess that was last Thursday. So we appreciate that. Um, I am fine with you, um, uh, acknowledging that that is on the schedule with respect to uh, what we will be doing and how we'll be addressing it. I do think it needs to be marked up for a commission meeting and that will be part of our consideration as we look at our calendar because I do think you had some other items that we needed to turn to. Uh, Dr. Lightbound, uh, I'm not sure if you are prepared for today, but because of the noticing, I would want to guard against any vote, but if you would like to give some update with Steve right now, that's that's absolutely fine. Um, well, within the um, harness industry, there there have been um, some uh, cases of coronavirus, and um, at least, uh, maybe Steve can correct me, but I think there's at least two um, deaths, unfortunately, now, and um, the uh, area, you know, New York, New Jersey, um, that area, there is quite a bit of um, interaction between um, harness horsemen at those tracks and um, throughout the region. So that is a concern as to um, what that might mean for opening day. And opening day was scheduled for which date? 
April 6th, um, and obviously um, there's a lot to do to prepare for opening day, um, including um, qualifying races for um, the horses to get uh, ready to race. And those are usually held, um, you know, at least a week before we open. So, um, you know, that shortens the time even further. So right now the suspension um, of the operations aligns with our, our decision of two weeks on Saturday morning, correct? Correct. Ca Commissioner Cameron, um, uh, uh, first off, uh, Steve, did you want to add in? And then that might help um, all of the commissioners understand what, what you are searching for for guidance today, and then we can decide if we um, need to reconvene another meeting. So, so Director Lightbound is, is accurate. There's been two two deaths in the harness racing community so far in the Northeast. Um, and unfortunately, uh, some of those participants in the industry have traveled from track to track. There's an entire family that's uh, hospitalized at this time with one death in their family. So uh, it's kind of been a little bit of a tragic time in, in, in harness racing and definitely want to guard against uh, the, the, the travel and, and, and what goes on in our business because it's very transient. So um, I, I have kept uh, Director Lightbound informed of what's going on, and she's very she's very good at keeping herself informed with the internet stories and, and all. But uh, some of the inside stuff that uh, that we're privy to that doesn't get published, um, I've kept her abreast of. Um, I, the uh, we had we were going to try and qualify on uh, Thursday. March 26th uh, to hold our first qualifiers or Monday, uh, I think it's the first, um, but uh, the, the 30th, but um, obviously that, those will not happen. Um, as Dr. Director Lightbound said, there's a lot that goes into the preparation, but I do believe that uh, with the nature of our business, especially in the racing uh, aspect where uh, we do have a lot of horsemen in a, in a closed a confined area, a lockdown area during our racing uh, programs that um, we probably should talk about, um, uh, you know, some type of uh, postponement um, of the scheduled live racing days for in the month of April and maybe even further out as professional sports have uh, extended their projections out as far as June. So I, 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 I I look forward to those discussions because I think they're of utmost importance um, to our entire community. Where we've already experienced some of the um, some of the real downside of this of this uh, disaster. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, may I yeah. make a comment? Yes, of um, course, this is the Cameron. This is Commissioner Cameron. Uh, listen, I would be happy to um, conduct a um, a meeting. Um, a, a virtual meeting. We can do this by conference call with uh, Mr. O'Toole and uh, Director Lightbaum and be prepared um, to give uh, a recommendation to the full commission um, in the near future at a commission meeting. And, and, and that commission meeting can be, of course, convened on an emergency basis. Yeah. But we will also, you know, we over the what whatever is best for this community and of course for the public at large um we can be very nimble so i think i would i would like that um uh, uh that conference call to go forward and and um i appreciate you steve for bringing this up today and i guess then unless i hear from um, our other commissioners uh, commissioner cameron will proceed as, as she just suggested Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, and again, thank you for all the uh, cooperation and leadership. Uh, turning now to uh, Suffolk Downs, uh, Ma Madam oh. Chair, this is Loretta Lilios, and I'm sorry to interrupt, um, but uh, before moving on to the next licensee, I wanted to, uh, or to the next um, uh, representative, I wanted to note that the agenda. Uh, does address account wagering as well as the simulcasting, and although uh, that um, 
operation uh, does not appear to be impacted by the governor's recent order on the 25-person uh, uh, limit. Uh, it is uh, a matter that was noted on the, the agenda and uh, may suggest that uh, Mr. O'Toole would like to update on that as well. Thank, thank you, um, Loretta. I appreciate it very much. Uh, RADW is uh, HollywoodRaces.com, um, and that continues to operate. There are some tracks <clears throat> that are uh, racing without crowds. Um, they are canceling uh, daily. Um, there are cards that are actually have already been drawn, um, so we're down to a limited number there. But uh, uh, that's correct that the ADWs really aren't impacted. It's telephone wagering. And um, so there are still still a few operations out there, and if they're if they're uh, offering their product, um, we're taking them at Hollywood races unless the commission feels that we shouldn't. All right, and just to um, uh, um, Loretta, if you just want to remind uh, the commission and those who are at this meeting of the how the ADW works. In terms of it being a, 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 a remote platform that is used to place bets uh, through the uh, telephone or online, that would be really helpful. I, I will do my best, although, uh, frankly, Dr. Lightmaw may be in a better position uh, with some of the details, but it is my understanding, uh, as you uh, both have stated, that it is largely a remote platform. Uh, but there, there may be uh, some telephone tellers in Massachusetts, uh, but that that is a very limited uh, number um, uh, of individuals, uh, far below the 25, uh, uh, 25 number. Dr. Lightbound, do you wish to add in here? Uh, no, that that is correct, um, and um, I'm not even sure if... Um, Suffolk or Plain Ridge have um, telephone operators on site anymore. Um, it may just be um, Raynham that does, but um, the track operators can um, inform the commission when they each speak. Mr. O'Toole, do, you, do we have employees on site here, or is everything done in a, a, another jurisdiction? Um, our call center is located in Oregon, so our, our live uh, tellers are go to the call center in Oregon. Thank you. And of course, uh, this is all dependent on continued racing. Um, I understand they, they are racing without um, any uh, live audience, but that is dependent, and we do understand that many of those races are shutting down. Any questions about the ADW and uh, PPC's uh, uh, continued operation as stated? Commissioner Cameron. No questions. Commissioner O'Brien? Uh, no, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Zuniga? Uh, no, no questions. Thank you. Okay. And Commissioner Stebbins? Uh, no questions, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you. And thank you for the complete report. And again, thank you, Loretta Lilios, for reminding us that that is part of um, today's agenda. And, and we do need to keep aware of that practice. Moving on now to um, Mr. Tuttle, are you online, please? Uh, would you be mute? Um, I would. I can cannot see if you're because it would come to a phone number. If Mr. Tuttle, you are on the online. Okay, um, Dr. Lightbound, you want to give a report that you if um, if we're online, you have probably understood he would give? Uh, yes, uh, Suffolk Downs was going to seize any um, simulcast operations at um, 6 on uh, Saturday, 6 p.m., and um, they were going to continue their account wagering, and um, again, that's through the uh, Oregon hub. Um, yep. So as long as they're up, oh, there's Chip. It sounds yeah, like Chip is on now. Yes, uh, pardon me, Madam Chair and, and Dr. Lightbone. I was not uh, as quick on the Star Six update uptake as I should have been. But um, 
Yes, I am. I, I am here, and yeah. Um, so I I want to start by uh, echoing what Steve said. Uh, you know, we appreciate Dr. Lightbond's availability. Uh, we had been in touch with her midweek last week, anticipating uh, that you know we were getting very close to to suspending on-site simulcast operations um, and had been in touch with her leading into the weekend. Um, Yes, uh, 6 p.m. or so on Saturday, uh, we suspended on-site simulcasting uh, at a very orderly transition. Um, We, uh, similar to the uh, gaming licensees, um, you know, we we secured our uh, money room and um, you know, notified the state police of uh, the schedule of cash transfers and and things like that. Um, We uh, are continuing ADW operations uh, the same way or similar to the way that that, uh, Steve described for Plane Ridge. Um, Those are all remote. Our our, uh, ADW partners all uh, operate out of that same Oregon multi-jurisdictional hub. We do not require any employees on site uh, in order for that to continue. Um, and so, you know, our employees are all, uh, home with the exception of some, some, uh, management and accounting, uh, personnel, uh, and, and a little bit of maintenance and cleaning to, uh, make sure that we are taking care of the facility during the shutdown. Thank you, Mr. Tuttle. Um, Questions. I'll go again through um, each uh, for each commissioner. Commissioner Cameron. Um, thank you, and I do not have questions. I think that was a complete report. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Commissioner O'Brien. No, I have no questions. Thank you, Commissioner Zuniga. No questions. Uh, thank you. Thank you, and Commissioner Stebbins. Uh, no, just a thank you to uh, Mr. Tuttle and his team, but no questions. Yes, yes and I, I'll echo that, and I know that each commissioner um, is being efficient, but we all thank um, both you, Chip, and Steve for for all the efforts here to do this in an orderly fashion um, and, and, and being so aware of the reach of this virus and how important it is to take these steps, so thank you. Um, so I will turn, if there are no further questions, I will turn to Raynham Park. I believe that either Mr. Carney or one of his, um, members of his team is, um, participating today. If you could unmute and, uh, and and introduce yourself, please. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. My name is George Carney. I'm the owner and manager of Raynham Park. Good morning, Mr. Carney. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. Um, Dr. Lightbound, do you want to just um, give a, a quick update as to um, uh, the current state of, of what you understand, and then we'll have Mr. Carney be able to add in. Um, well, um, we were in touch with uh, Mr. Carney um, earlier, you know, this week about. Um, Random's plans, um, they have a, a fairly um, small clientele right now, so it would be under the 250, um, but with the um, new directive from the governor um, on restricting um, gatherings to 25 people, um, you know, I'm, and um, also eliminating um, restaurants being open, those are two new things that um, would affect um, Raynham. And, um, I'll let Mr. Carney um, talk about what his plans are. Yes, with the new rules and regulations, we plan to shut down. As a matter of fact, we'll shut down <clears throat> immediately as, well, as soon as I was informed about the twenty the number being reduced to 25. Commissioner. Thank you. These are extraordinary times, aren't they, Mr. Carney? Well, I'm <laughs> heading into 92 years. It's the first time I've ever seen anything like this in my lifetime. So, and I hope it's the last. Well, and, and, and I, um, I can only imagine from your perspective what it, what it seems like. Uh, so we appreciate your efforts here, your continued cooperation with Dr. Lightbound, 
And, um, you know, we wish you um, good health, and um, we um, just will be thinking of you and your team and your family members. So thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, and I can... Oh, I, I'm going to go now to each each commissioner. Commissioner Cameron. Uh, yes, I have a question for Mr. Carney. Uh, can you hear me, first of all? Yes, yes we I can. can. Okay, great. Uh, Mr. Carney, you mentioned that you had intended to close down with the new uh, regulations. Does that mean um, today, as of today, your operation is closed? We, <clears throat> when I heard about it last night, late last night, we, we decided not to even open today. Okay, very good. Thank you for that clarification, and thank you for uh, so quickly abiding by, uh, you know, with this emergent situation. Thank you. Okay, uh, Commissioner O'Brien, do you have any questions or comments from Mr. Carney? Uh, no, other than to say thank you, uh, and thank you to Dr. Lightbound, and that I hope he uh, stays safe. Thank you. Commissioner Zuniga. No questions. Uh, thank you, everybody. And Commissioner Stebbins. No, uh, thank you, Mr. Carney, and uh, no questions at this time. Okay. So, to all of our presenters at this time on our agenda, um, I, I I do want to thank thank you. Oh, um, I am being reminded uh, because the technology is working with that. We did not address ADW, and I think to just be fully transparent, Mr. Carney, if you could just give an update on the ADL, ADW um, um, operations for that year. To be honest, we, we hadn't planned to open, to, be, to, up, to do any of that. Um, oh. They had shut the whole plant down and, and, be, and, be, and be, get it behind us. Okay, I understand. Thank you for that. That's very helpful. So again, um, we do have um, an item to discuss under item three, but I'm going to just take this opportunity for all those who um, are external to the M MGC team. Again, we, we thank you, our fellow licensees, the um, representatives from the racing community today for all of your cooperation, um, your continued communication with the um, executive team all the way through MGC. Uh, these are extraordinary times, and I think everybody has demonstrated uh, that we can in, in, in be very nimble and react in an extraordinary fashion. So thank you, um, and I do wish all of you, um, you know, good health right now for you and your team, and of course your family and loved ones. Um, moving on to number three. We do have a, um, a matter that I couldn't have anticipated um, at the time of posting, which of course was uh, last evening, uh, just because this is an emergency meeting. Uh, but we did have on um, our agenda, uh, we had as a commission extended the deadline for the independent monitor um, to report, baseline report to be uh, by the end of this month. And we have had a request, and I asked Commissioner O'Brien if he could update us on that particular request. Um, certainly. Thank you, Chair. Um, this, as, as we all know, we were anticipating sometime in the month of April um, getting a presentation on the six-month baseline report from the independent monitor. And not surprisingly, given the circumstances of the last days and weeks, uh, the independent monitor did reach out this morning um, for clarification on deadlines and presentations um, so that they can finish compiling everything they need to and uh, make sure that all the participants can actively participate. Um, based on realities in that request, um, I am making a motion, and, and we'll do it formally at the end once we've had a chance to comment, but I would make a motion um, that extends what had been the deadline through the end of March, uh, through the end of April to April 30th, that would make sure that this could be uh, moved forward, but in a way that's safe for um, the licensee, the monitor, and all of us. I'm going to ask each of you if you have questions for uh, Commissioner O'Brien or me, Commissioner Stubbins. 
Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Commissioner O'Brien, is obviously um, the current situation is reducing everybody's ability to travel or undertake um, uh, undertake work. Is is this um, is this a question based on the um, how our independent monitor is operating or their ability to interact with um, our licensee? Uh, my understanding it's more of the latter, um, given not only what's happening here, but they also um, are doing something similar in Las Vegas. Um, and so finishing the final coordination to get everything done and to us and then have them participate with meetings um, is more realistic to ask that we go to the end of April. And, and just to add in, Commissioner Stebbins, I don't think it's necessary that they need FaceTime meetings. It would just be they're wrapping up their discussions and you know to make sure the baseline uh, report is is in proper final form for our consideration. So I don't think it's necessarily because they need to be on the premises. It's just more of a courtesy because these are such stressful times. Okay. If that is accurate. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I obviously I have no I have no problem with the extension. But that was a very fair question. Uh, we don't want anyone to feel that they need to travel. So thank you. Commissioner Zuniga, do you have any questions or comments? Yeah, no, um, you know, an extension seems only reasonable uh, given all the circumstances. I would be of the mindset of, um, you know, extending it until it's reasonable uh, or it's reasonably feasible to complete it. Uh, however, however, uh, by however means, uh, uh, remotely or what have you, but that's really up to uh, you, Commissioner uh, O'Brien, to decide. I'm, I'm just suggesting maybe having another hard date. Um, you know, we may end up, you know, having to look at that at, 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 in the near future. So, um, but uh, an extension of any kind seems only reasonable in my mind. Thank you, and Commissioner Cameron. Uh, yes, I, certainly this is a reasonable re request, and I think if we do have a date uh, such as the end of April, we could revisit it uh, because this is such a fluid situation. So um, certainly a reasonable request. Commissioner O'Brien, um, in light of those discussions, do you wish to make a motion? Uh, I do. Madam Chair, I would move that the current deadline um, for the six-month baseline presentation by the independent monitor to the gaming commission be extended from its current date to no later than April 30th, 2020. I second that second motion. That motion. Is... Okay. Okay. okay, the second is by Commissioner Zuniga. Um, I will do a little call vote. Commissioner Stebbins. Uh, aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Cameron? Aye. And the chair votes yes. Thank you. Uh, I am going to ask at this time if there is any other business that I have not heard from my uh, fellow commissioners that um, needs to be addressed in the emergency times um, under number three. I won't go through, but if you, you may just speak on your own if you have any additional business that you would like to address at this time. Okay, I am not hearing anything. If that's the case, do I have a motion to adjourn? Uh, so moved, Madam Chair. Second? There a second, a second. Okay, Commissioner Zuniga seconded. Again, a roll call vote. Commissioner Cameron? Aye. Commissioner um, O'Brien? Aye. Commissioner Zuniga? Aye. Commissioner Stebbins? Aye. Chair votes yes. This meeting is adjourned. Again, our great thanks to all who have participated today. And um, everybody stay well, stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.